the early years, 1912 to 1961. Nebraska went 18 and 20 and had three ties during this time. And Mike, as you were explaining here, during this uh, this era, Nebraska dominated the beginning, as we see, and then Oklahoma went on their tear. So um, I'll start with you, Mike, here. Let's go back to 1912, uh, it, something that you and Boomer have in, in common, uh, Jumbo Steam, uh, <laughs> a, a love of Jumbo Steam. It starts in 1912. We get through the, you know, we're let's talk about the teens and let's talk about the 20s. Let's kind of stay in that era right now and, and start talking about this. So go, Mike. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I should defer to Boomer because he's probably the steam expert here. The well, well, it's just that was the original meeting of the, the teams was 1912, um, Nebraska, Oklahoma. Um, and that kind of in a lot of ways set the tone for what the, the rivalry was going to be. It was a uh, game finished 13 to nine, but Oklahoma scored first. And uh, Vic Halligan had a quality comeback game in that leading Nebraska on a couple of touchdown drives to, to score and take the lead. And it was kind of the beginnings of almost what Sooner Magic happened. They got the ball the last bit of the game and went on two big two big plays and got the ball down in Nebraska territory and just fell short. They ran out of time and game ended thirteen to nine. That would have been you know pretty shocking upset for a you know Jumbo Steam team as as you all know. But he was a fairly decent coach for us. If you have watched the show before, <laughs> I like to bring that up on occasion. That you know you I mean, like a statue built. Yeah, a statue would be nice. Serious, yeah. just something simple like that. Nothing, nothing tacky or t- you know tasteless. But uh, that really kind of set the tone, I think, for the for, for the rivalry to come. Just that very first meeting we had, mm-hmm. and it kind of there was a kind of a different era back then too. Uh, Oklahoma was kind of known as the pass heavy team back then. They were. Well known for throwing air in the ball out. Nebraska took the opposite approach. We were we like to run and use a lot of misdirection and things like that. So it was just kind of set that other tone for just difference in styles and things. What would airing the ball out mean back then? Is that they, like eight passes well, a game? Yeah, or? more. Yeah, sometimes it could be <laughs> that many or more. But yeah, they they threw the ball quite a bit actually. If you go back and read all the literature and read the the newspaper clippings in the yearbook, they talk about how Oklahoma would throw the ball a lot. It was a Southerners thing to do, is how they put it. You know, in some of the some of the terminology I read. Nebraska, Nebraska might throw the ball a couple times maybe so you know but steam didn't do that though no <laughs> no so he uh his teams were just really aggressive and if if you got hurt you didn't come out because if you did come out you might never play again yeah I and mean, that's that's how demanding jumbo's team was and uh um i don't think you know they they call them the steamrollers i'm not sure that he necessarily appreciated that um from what i from what I've read in some of the student, uh, the yearbooks and the student newspaper or whatever, but, uh, you know, they were a grinded out kind of team. So Oklahoma was probably lucky that it only played Nebraska that one year because uh, when team was the coach, because I think he probably would have done some damage. In fact, uh, Minnesota, the first two years, Nebraska lost to Minnesota. Um, and those were the only two losses, I think, during Steam's tenure. He was 35, mm-hmm. two and three. Um, and then the third year they beat Minnesota and Minnesota dropped them. Minnesota, yeah. <laughs> they, uh, coach, uh, slash athletic director or whatever, the guy that ran the program, he was so upset that he just dropped them from the Wait, schedule. N- Nebraska is the only team to have a winning record against the, uh, the four horsemen and the Notre Dame dropped us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Steve, apparently, uh, although, yeah. you know, that was, that had more to do with, uh, uh, the Klan having an office in Lincoln, a, oh, geez, a building yeah. here, and the treatment of the Notre Dame fans um, in, uh, what was it, the last year that they played that game, 1923? That sounds right, yeah. Um, so 23 or 25, I'm one of those. Mm-hmm. But that's why, that's why that was discontinued. Newt Rockney wanted to keep playing, wanted the series to go on because it was a good moneymaker for Notre Dame to come to Lincoln because of the number of fans that came here and the the revenue it generated. But the administration at Notre Dame said no, the way the fans were treated. Um, and uh, they made a uh, the halftime show, they made fun of the four horsemen. They, uh, mm-hmm. they made them out as hod carriers, like which, which meant – the implication was that they got paid to play. Hey. So that was, was not as respectful yeah. of a rivalry no, as what no. we're No, no that was not. It wasn't respectful. And NIL hadn't quite taken off yet either. So, yeah, a little <laughs> um, different era. And, 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 and uh, yeah, there were there were underlying reasons that uh, that came to an end. And then they didn't play again until the 40s. Uh, hmm. 
and uh, Nebraska didn't do very well there, but um, Tom, Nova, Tom Novak did. He, he earned a lot of respect in the way he played against Notre Dame. But he was, he was a good one. Um, so, Boomer, I guess we kind of get through the teens, and 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 a lot's starting to happen with, college, with Nebraska football as we're getting into the 20s. They're going to be building a stadium. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's starting to happen now in those – those early twenties here. Well, like, uh, you know, Mike had said, that's, we joined the same conference, you know, both in the Missouri Valley soon become the big six, big eight, um, and started playing, you know, on basically an annual basis. And it, it, the series kind of kept going the way it had been. Nebraska dominated those early games. Again, same kind of thing. Oklahoma was pass heavy. We tended to, to run the ball a lot more. I know in the 22 game, we, we aired it out for Nebraska purposes and scored uh, three of our six touchdowns uh, by passing. So that kind of caught everyone off guard. But, uh, <laughs> And then I think the the next real big uh, moment in that in the series was in 1923, uh, which is the first game ever played in uh, what was going to be Memorial Stadium. So that was Nebraska Oklahoma. They were our first uh, first game played them, and no grass had been installed yet, so they played on dirt. And it kind of a unique situation. It's the first game played there, and it was also kind of the OG of the alternate uniforms for Nebraska. We uh, wore blue actually in the in that game. So if anyone's excited to see us wear blue, maybe this year against Oklahoma, we could really bring something back. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that. yeah. Oklahoma brought up its maroon jerseys or whatever, and they couldn't figure out how to differentiate the team. So Nebraska agreed to uh, wear a different color Jersey so that they could, so they could differentiate. So that was, the, you know, that's what was, that was what caused them to do that. And mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't, wasn't the dedication game. Yeah. The dedication game was against Kansas, mm -hmm. um, which Nebraska had played the de dedication game at Kansas Stadium, and same way here. But yeah, that was the first game played there. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess you know we're now, Mike. I'll kind of hand it back over to you. We're getting into the twenties here, and would that be is that Dana X Bible? And no, he was in the thirties. Oh, well, uh, first, Fred uh, Dawson. yeah, yeah, uh, Fred Dawson, was Dawson was the 20s, first, yeah. and then. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, when Bible, I think uh, he played against the. Uh, he won the last six. I know mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. against Oklahoma, and then he took off. Uh, and uh, who replaced him? Oh gosh, who was after Bible? Oh, what year did he leave? Would that have been like Biff Jones or? That might be about right. Yeah. So. Yeah, that might be. Yeah, that sounds right. So, well, to keep going, to, to kind of reiterate, to go back to this, right now, you know, we're, we're, you know, about mostly through the red here as we're getting into the 30s, you know. So we, we dominate this whole first part of the series, everything through the teens, through the 20s. We start getting in the 30s. And then that would be the, the, uh, the Bible years. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he won like six in a row or Nebraska was having a lot of success against Oklahoma at this time. Yeah. What and starts, in the conference as well. And, and in the conference as well. So what starts to happen in the thirties? What's the transition that um, starts to, well, I guess it would have been all the way. It's the 41 season is our last really good year at that point where we go to the, uh, or the 40 season where we go to the Rose bowl. But um, what starts to change? What well, happens where we. Something happened in 41 that kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, the war had, had some yeah. effect here. But, you know, it had an effect negatively on Nebraska, but also what happens with Oklahoma? When do they start to get it turned around, Mike? You know, I don't – I never did figure out what what changed for Oklahoma. You know, it, some of it was – some of it had to be population-based and the proximity to Texas mm -hmm. um, because of the, your ability to get more athletes, although – you know, the Rose Bowl team, Nebraska had uh, every every player on the team except one was from Nebraska. There was one guy from Kansas on that team. Um, and one thing that did change, and I couldn't give you a time frame, but I know it was in this general time frame, was that some schools were effectively – giving players scholarships or paying them to play. That was mm -hmm. one of the things, and Nebraska didn't do that. You know, players could get jobs. Um, they helped them do that, but but they didn't pay them. And I, I remember um, reading a story in a newspaper account from about 1941 or 42, somewhere in there, um, where players were talking about having talked to 
uh, players from the other team when they came up to Lincoln to play the game. And they were talking about, well, we get this and this and this. You don't get anything like that. And the Nebraska guy had said, uh, no, we don't get anything like that. I, I really believe that's one of the things that changed. Um, and Nebraska didn't start giving scholarships on a consistent basis until the 50s. Mm -hmm. um, but I think other programs did. And Oklahoma could have been one of those. I'm not saying it was, but there was that um, there was that possibility. I think that that enabled programs to develop because they were they had a if you call it scholarships or whatever it was they were they were giving these uh, uh, players an opportunity to uh, make some money in in doing this. I think uh, Wilkinson even got Oklahoma on probation a couple times. I think in the fifties for well, you know that's slush fund. Yeah, so it, yeah, yeah. There's some so it was there's some drama there. Yeah, yeah, Oklahoma went on was uh, uh, there was a probation probation year in '56. I know that, um, and then there was one in '73, and I think there was one before '56. Um, but uh, yeah, that's part of the intrigue of the '59 Nebraska Oklahoma game. Well, let's let's get to that actually. So basically, we know that you know Oklahoma started to turn it around. Nebraska went downhill in the '40s, and over the course of the '40s and '50s, that's when Oklahoma had their long win streak. And this is something you 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 mentioned this when we did our Husker History 101. You mentioned it before this show too. Oklahoma didn't have a a, a conference winning streak; they had a conference unbeaten streak, right, right. going into right. the '59 game. And of course, the '59 game. Uh, some of the intrigue too is we're coached by Bill Jennings, who was an Oklahoma, former Oklahoma um, uh, coach there. And uh, it's, it was a huge upset here. We're going to show the video here. Leroy Zentic uh, getting a, a punt return. Uh, return. Lincoln East high coach. Long time. Man. Jackie Hall split wide to the right side. Quick kick for the Sooners. It's partially blocked as Cornell tried to get that one off. The ball is rolling free. One of the Huskers has it. It could be going all the way. It's the Roy Zedek to the five. He's over. The Roy Zedek picked up that loose ball. There's a flag, however, on the 22, but the penalty must Oklahoma. The Roy Zedek picked up that loose ball. We could have the upset of the year in the making. The upset of the year in the making. Mike. Oh, yeah. I've got a program from that game. Oh, yeah. So, I yeah, I mean, what – what did that game mean at that moment? I mean, how big of an upset was that? I mean, to try to put that in perspective for the, the Redcasters that uh, maybe don't have a, a, as clear of a memory there of it. Okay, so you got the 74-game conference unbeaten streak. There's there's two ties involved in that. You've got the, the little – okay, so let's go back to 1958, February. Nebraska upsets Wilk Chamberlain in Kansas. Okay, huge, huge upset. Although people think Kansas was number one, Kansas wasn't number one. I think it was either uh, number six or number four, or something like that. But Will Chamberlain didn't make any difference where they were ranked. It was Will Chamberlain, and they had beaten Nebraska earlier in the season. I think 102 to 102 to something, and Chamberlain outscored Nebraska and the and uh, or 104 to something. And and the headline in the newspaper said Will Chamberlain 52 Nebraska or. Well, Chamberlain, 52, Kansas, 52, Nebraska, like 40-something or whatever. <laughs> uh, then Nebraska comes back and beats Kansas in Lincoln. Uh, Jim Kabaki hits a shot, and and uh, it's a big upset. So the students go to the chancellor, Clifford Harden, and say, we want can classes canceled on Monday because of this big victory. And Harden says, okay, on one, we have one stipulation. Classes are canceled, but they will not be canceled ever again until Nebraska beats Oklahoma. Okay, <laughs> this is in February 1958. So now we're now we're October 31st, 1959. It's mm -hmm. Halloween for one thing, mm -hmm. um, and it's not the last game of the of the conference season for Nebraska. It's one of three times that it, that Oklahoma wasn't from 1950 to to 95. Um, you've got Jennings. Who, who went to Norman High School. He played football at Norman High School. Then he was an assistant coach at Oklahoma. And the story was that the investigation, which led to the, the uh, penalty, in, the NCAA penalty in 1956, the one-year uh, penalty, 
was involved in recruiting infractions and that Jennings was sort of the recruiting coordinator for Oklahoma, he ended up being the fall guy, supposedly, for this whole investigation after the 53 or 54 season when the investigation is going on. So Oklahoma gets him a job with an oil company and releases him, you know, as part of this investigation on the on the uh, on the uh, uh, recruiting violations thing. Okay, so 1956, Nebraska hires Pete Elliott, who had been an assistant at Oklahoma. He comes to Nebraska and he gets Bill Jennings as an assistant, gets him back into coaching, brings him up here. So Pete Elliott coaches one year mm-hmm. and then takes off for California and Bill Jennings succeeds him as coach. So that's how Bill has got there. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, the, the other bit of intrigue and where this fits in here is supposedly Jennings and Wilkinson had an agreement that if Nebraska was recruiting anybody in Oklahoma, um, Jennings would let Wilkinson know about it and Wilkinson would sign off on it or he would he would quit doing that. And if Wilkinson was recruiting anybody in Nebraska, Jennings would have to sign off on it. And before, if he didn't, then Wilkinson would back away. Except that Oklahoma was interested enough in Monty Kiffin that Oklahoma, the Wilkinson flew up to Lexington, Nebraska to talk to Monty Kiffin and Jennings found out about it and got upset about it. Okay. So we got all this going on. Now they play the game. Nebraska pulls the upset, ends this conference unbeaten streak. And Oklahoma was four and three at that point. Nebraska was two and four, I think, going into that game. Um, And there's more. Oklahoma has another probation, one-year probation thing in 1960, and there's all this, well, Jen, you know, it's Jennings' fault. He's blowing the whistle on Oklahoma, and so Oklahoma tries to blow the whistle on Nebraska for recruiting some guy in Wichita, Kansas, that didn't end up coming to Nebraska. So when Nebraska plays Oklahoma in 1960, the year after that, Nebraska wins again. And Jennings has to have a police escort off the field because the fans are so irate about it. <laughs> so you talk about drama. There was all this drama going on that involved a guy who had gone to Norman High School and had been coached there by a guy who coached at Oklahoma before Jim Tatum and then the Bud Wilkinson thing. So, that yeah, there was a lot mm-hmm. of drama in that 59 game underneath – the game itself, not just to mention, you know, how it came out. So and that, kind of, yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah. So, I mean, that, that starts to wrap up kind of the fifties gets us into the sixties. And like you said, they, that Nebraska even won in 60 and then in 61, Oklahoma wins that, that game. And that's the final game of the Jennings era against Oklahoma. And that kind of closes out. If we go back to what the early years are, we're, we're saying this segment, this, this goes to 61, so, Mike, if I could kind of maybe synopsis of, of what we just got done talking about, that this first era here, um, right here, you know, so 18, 20, and 3, 19, 12, to 1961, kind of a synopsis of this era. Where are we at in the, the program leaving this as, as Devaney starting to come in? Because we're going to get into the Devaney era next. But, like, right now, I mean, how do we kind of put a bow on, on everything that's happened up to this point in the series? Well, for Nebraska, you know, Oklahoma, we see where Oklahoma's going with this 47-game winning streak from 53 to 57, and then this conference unbeaten streak of 74 games. Um, you know, Oklahoma had things rolling. Nebraska had was going through coaches trying to find somebody. Um, you know, uh, uh, Bill Glassford had, uh, what, he had a winning season or two in there. Uh, but Nebraska just didn't – didn't have any success. I mean, Jennings didn't have a winning season. Elliott didn't have a winning season. And and uh, there was a lot of drama with the end of the Glassford era. You know, there was a, a kind of a player revolt uh, uh, started by uh, some alumni in Omaha uh, and a petition to get rid of him and, and so forth. And he backed away, even though he had another year 
on his contract. I think he said, I don't need any more of this. I'm out of here. Um, Nebraska was trying to get some stability in coaching, which it really hadn't had since the Rose Bowl. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nebraska didn't have, but what, two or maybe two winning seasons? Um, maybe not. Yeah, two winning seasons and, and a 500 season uh, from the Rose Bowl up until the uh, uh, including the uh, 59 game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so really up until the very recent era of Husker football, the down years of Nebraska football were the, the 40s yeah. and, the, and the 50s. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that and so really that is what Devaney is kind of inheriting as he's starting to come in. Hey, uh, Redcast Rob, I know you're on the back end here doing some producing for us. Do we have any questions uh, uh, that uh, have come in so far from the uh, listeners? All right, or the viewers. We have Abby Harris. Why do you think the nebraska Oklahoma rivalry was, was more respectful than any other Nebraska rivalry? Mike? Uh, you know, I think some of it was that, again, Oklahoma's bitter rival was Texas. You know, there was a lot of bitterness there. Um, Nebraska, because of the lack of success that we talked about during those times, probably didn't have any position to be to be abrasive to anybody. Mm. And, it, you know, I, I think that I think the uh, the connection I, I'm going to fast forward because I think that the, the respectfulness was towards the end of the, of the Devaney era and during the Osborne era. Mm -hmm. I think there was a lot of respectfulness. When Osborne got done and then you look at it beyond that, I don't think there was so much respect. You know, you talk about the, uh, we can mm -hmm. talk about it later, the 2004 game that kind of reflected where that thing was at at that point. We're but I, you know, Osborne and Switzer maintained some contact. I think a lot of people didn't realize that. I think Barry Switzer, even though there was a lot of controversy about, you know, when he when he ended up uh, his time at Oklahoma, um, I remember going down to, uh, I've probably mentioned this before, but I remember going down to Oklahoma um, the week of the Nebraska game when it was going to be played in Norman, and the newspaper would send me down there and, and you know, we'd write about the game coming up, and I did it once or twice. And the Oklahoma people were just extremely cordial. I mean, Mike Treps was the uh, sports information director. He had got begun his career as a as TV broadcaster at uh, a KHS TV in in Hastings, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. um, I remembered watching wrestling, and he was the the voice, the, the KHS TV uh, wrestling uh, guy. Um, he was the SID, so I'd go down there. It was like you had access to whatever you wanted. You know, they were just very. Uh, very accommodating. Barry Switzer always called me by a first name. It wasn't my mom, wasn't my name, but I think it was Bob. <laughs> it was always considered, you know, they were just, it was just a cordial kind of a thing. And I think it carried over, you know, because the coaches maintained some contact and, and because Nebraska fans were, I think, really respectful. And, and again, I don't know whether that was a reflection of what Osborne said when they played Oklahoma or what Oklahoma had accomplished or whatever wasn't the same way with Missouri. It wasn't the same mm -hmm. way with Colorado, um, but it certainly was with, with Oklahoma. With and Oklahoma. I think it began with, it, it had to do a lot with the coaches. Um, and, you know, Devaney coached Chuck Fairbanks at Michigan state. Hmm. Um, Devaney was an assistant coach there. And For Fairbanks, priority, yeah. um, although there was a little friction there in the, uh, uh, 68 game ended up 47 to nothing Oklahoma and Bob was not or was it 60 yeah 68 game Bob wasn't mm. real happy with that he thought they ran up the score so in 69 Nebraska beat Oklahoma 44 to 14 and, <laughs> we got uh, we got him back yeah got him back um, but yeah I, I I saw the same thing that's a good question because I saw the same thing uh, a respect that wasn't there for some other programs that was there for Oklahoma mm -hmm. and it was very frustrating. So, uh, you know, Tom's uh, Bob's record was five and six against Oklahoma. Tom's record was till Switzer left was five and twelve, and then when right. Switzer left, it was eight and one after that. 